I know it looks like I'm going in order, but I swear I'm still starting off with the ones that I've experienced, the sinister aspects I've experienced. It just so happens that I've experienced moon in first overlay, moon in second overlay, and today we're gonna do moon in third overlay. Hi, my name is Imani, writer, astrologer, um, and we're doing a December challenge where every single day for December we are talking about sinistry on this channel only. So go ahead and subscribe. So that you don't miss a beat okay today we're talking about moon in the third house this is a cutesy one too and i'm super excited to talk about this one because i feel like there's not a lot of like really good information that you can find on google about this overlay but moon in the third house that like the first thing that comes to mind when i think of moon in the third house is like they are trying to leave their toothbrush at your place like it's not necessarily that they're comfortable being in your home but it's like a little bit close to the sixth house where they enjoy doing these like mundane tasks with tasks with you but i feel like more for the sixth house we'll get into that at another time but the sixth house is like let's you know call me up and let's hop in the car and go get groceries or some kind of snacks together you know moon in the third house they want to be involved in your private rituals that's the third house private rituals private routines stuff like brushing your teeth in the morning something like you know like what your morning breath smells like like very private intimate things that have to do with your day-to-day -day, but usually you don't really share with anyone else so you can see from that explanation like the third house is super intimate it can be super intimate and of course the third house also has to do with communication so these two if you have like a moon in the third house they usually are chatting it up like they can talk about anything under the sun there's always these giggles these laughs like there's a lot of energy given like back and forth they're sparking between each other it's the sparks like the third house Moon in the third house, these two, the placement doesn't really matter too much here, you know, it's like the third house person can sometimes act like what people would describe the moon person to be. The energy is just so back and forth that before you know it, they're both sharing each other's energy. And it, it's cool, it's nice. It's a little telepathic at times, depending on the sign that's falling over there. So we haven't talked about signs in the moon in the first and the moon in the second, because I feel like the sign can tell you the style but for the most part the energy is going to be the same here however if you add a water sign cancer scorpio or pisces over this moon in third overlay you can get more of a telepathic connection than maybe someone with a fire or earth like i feel like you can still get the telepathic connection even still because it's not to say like water signs are the only intuitive or like you know has those kind of gifts but i feel like there would be a, a more prioritized focus with the other elements as opposed to with water signs their priority is sending you messages through signs and symbols <laughs> moon in the third house it's also giving like the neighbors to lovers plot line i feel like if you have the moon in third house overlay it definitely becomes that one Taylor Swift music video where she's like holding up the sign and she's like are you okay like <laughs> that's definitely giving like the moon in the third house vibes moon in the third house overlay is very it becomes very obsessed with seeing like just knowing all the details of you so you're always picking out like what like what do we have in common but don't we have in common like those are the kind of type of conversations that you guys are probably gonna have if you have this moon overlay, moon in the third house overlay with someone, I feel like what I would recommend, especially in the beginning of you guys coming together, date in groups, like meet up, like bring two friends with you, tell them to bring two friends with them, make it like an outdoor socializing aspect. When you guys can see each other in that light, you'll definitely pick up on the parts of you that are more compatible first before you delve into like the other sinister aspects that are going on in your chart last thing i'll probably say about moon in the third house overlay if you guys meet each other like at school or in some kind of like a sports setting i feel like you guys can develop a very competitive nature between the two of you where it's like 
you admire this person so much but also they're kind of your rival <laughs> like you want to you you want to partner with them but you also like want to beat them because you're just like oh they're so good <laughs> but yeah the foreplay here is definitely in the actions and the things you talk about throughout the day so can be very intimate as well <laughs> all right but i think i'm gonna also go into moon in the fourth house don't say nothing i told y'all i had experience so yeah i'm gonna do that video next and pop it, pop it up for you guys, catch up, and just get this December challenge rolling. Drop your sinister questions in the comments, and I'll answer them in the next video, okay? Yeah, catch you in the next one.